What's up, Fish Tank people? FishTankTV.com, Dustin's Fish Tanks, bringing it to you, heating it up with you, talking about inline water heaters today. How's everybody doing? I hope you're doing well. In today's video, we're going to talk about inline water heaters, some of the pros, some of the cons, when you can use them, when you shouldn't use them, and uh, some of my experiences with them. So here we go. Okay, first things first. Remember when you were a kid and your older sister or brother, you were in the shower and your brother or sister flushed the toilet and then all of a sudden your wonderful hot shower got cold? That's because the hot water tank in your house started to get more drained or you just straight up ran out of hot water, okay? That's because 99% of the houses, in the US anyway, and I'm not speaking for Europe, have what's called a tanked water heater. These are usually heated by probably gas in the most part, maybe electric. The problem with this is, is that when the water gets too low, it has to fill back up and reheat. So you're just gonna get cold water in your shower. Let's talk about this with aquariums. Okay, let's talk about this with aquariums. Anybody who's kept fish for a reasonable amount of time understands the importance of water changes. There is no substitute, there is no alternative. Water changes, water changes, water changes, water changes, water changes, water changes, water changes changes. The easier it is to do water changes, the better off your aquarium is going to be in most situations. So you have to make it easy on yourself to do water changes. This is my 220 gallon aquarium. I recommend that people do around a 50% water change. You can get away with less 20, 25, whatever. Regardless, in a 220 gallon aquarium, if I want to do a 50% water change, here comes the math, 50% of 220 is 110 gallons. Where's the problem, Dusty? The problem is that Dusty's water tank my hot water tank at my home is about 50 gallons i like to reference my wife in these videos a lot happy wife happy life one of the things that my loving wife does for me is she does my laundry sometimes i actually think to myself when she folds my underwear and puts a shirt and then another set of underwear on top of that why can't she put all my underwear in the same pile and then i realized i haven't done my own laundry in about 10 years with my wife ran aside i want to break it to you like this sometimes while my wife is being the saint that she is and she is doing my dirty laundry she is running the washing machine what happens when my wife is running the washing machine and i try to do a 220 gallon aquarium 50 percent water change 110 gallons guess what they ain't no more hot water so what do you do do you tell your wife to stop doing your laundry heck no you gotta figure an alternative, you gotta do your water changes late at night, which is what I got away with for quite a long time. But the reality of the situation is, even when my wife is not doing my laundry, I only have about a 50 gallon water tank at my current house. So 50 gallons is pretty much all I got before the 220 starts to get cold. So Dusty, why don't you just get a big old giant tank in the greenhouse? Well, my 1.0 greenhouse is actually very small, so to have a giant massive tank out there would be ridiculous. Plus, I don't have any natural gas lines ran out to the greenhouse. Natural gas is probably cheaper than electric. I didn't want some massive, big, giant water tank out in the greenhouse. Not to mention, I drain it all the way down. Same problem I got in my house. I drain it 50 gallons, I'm done. I got like 2,000 gallons of water in the greenhouse. A full tank water heater isn't gonna work it. Enter the stable Eltron. Okay, inline water heater or tankless water heater. Look, there's a lot of fun things you can buy with your aquarium. Buying an inline or tankless water heater is one of those such things. However, I will tell you this, inline water heaters are not perfect when it comes to their use with aquariums. I actually talked to uh, Chuck Bramer about this out in uh, St. Louis before I actually went and purchased one. Here's the deal with inline or tankless water heaters. The first problem is this, they heat water on demand and when it hits the actual inline water heater from there once it's pushed through the unit the unit will raise it up to 86 or higher there's a problem with that okay the problem is this while we're not actually paying to constantly be heating a giant tank water heater like you do in your homes typically with an inline water heater it heats on demand but these are set to be used in a shower I should create my own inline water heater. The problem is they're created to be used in a shower, sink, dishwasher, whatever. Their minimum setting is 86 degrees. And guess what happens when you set your temperature at 86 degrees and you want 86 degree water into your tank? Unless you're keeping some really crazy discus, you're going to probably kill your fish, okay? So you have to cut the water heater. I've got an entire video about how I cut the water in my inline water heater. But I think it's important to know that just because you buy an inline water heater, unfortunately, even though I have the stable Eltron Tempra Plus, which has a setting that makes sure it doesn't drop below a certain temperature, that bottom default temperature is still at 86, so I still have to cut the water. Now, here's where it gets fun. Once you get the piping figured out for an inline water heater, 
it is a game changer folks no more do you have to worry about when you run the water tank down too low and all of a sudden the water gets cold when you have an inline water heater and you get the temperature mixing with the hot and cold you can use a mixing valve i don't i use a little bit of a ball valve or whatever but when you get the temperature mixing right and it's coming out of the inline water heater at 86 but you're cutting it with i don't know 60 degree water and you're getting right around 72 78 your money your money 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 and you will never go back to a regular water heater which is part of the problem i have with my 220 gallon aquarium let's be real about it here folks this is a 220 gallon aquarium this aquarium has taken some abuse because i got spoiled that's right super duper uber duper spoiled by having an inline water heater out in the greenhouse and not in my home so I wish I had a little inline water heater in my house. I do not. So the 220, while I would love to do massive 50% water changes and just throttle the water, the reality of it is the setup in the sink that I have in my current basement sucks because I cannot keep the water temperature straight because nine times out of 10, my wife is doing either laundry or the dishes running on the hot water. When the hot water gets out, all of a sudden I have ice cold water coming in. So instead of doing relaxed, chill, let it run, let it flow, water changes like I do out in the greenhouse, in the 220 gallon aquarium, I actually have to sit there and hold it and babysit it. It also can't come out too fast. Every now and then I have to sprint over to the sink and make sure that the water is uh, turned off or whatever because it's coming out ice cold. So, do me a favor, folks. Drop me a comment on what you think about inline water heaters. Do you own one? Have you ever considered owning one? Uh, what questions do you have about the sizing? I kind of rushed this video because I have a meeting with the city today. But drop me a comment on your inline water heater. Loves, desires, or questions. Tank on, everybody. Later.